Good morning and welcome to worship. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Vicar Jonah Davis. Obviously, I'm not Pastor Weitzel. What a vicar means is I am not ordained yet. I have just completed seminary, so I graduated in May, completed my internship around the same time. So first, it is a joy to be with you all. There are a few other announcements, mainly that this will be service of the word. Since I'm not ordained, we will not have communion today, but we will focus on the word of God. There are other announcements in the back of your bulletin. First to highlight is Wednesday. There is a 9 a.m. adult Bible study with Pastor Weitzel. Looks like choir practice is beginning September 2nd. Uh, Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. And then two large announcements for God's work, our hands, uh, to te- September 12th. There is a community tea party which will benefit Align Pregnancy Services. So if you can attend, that would be great. And there will be a dedication service for the audio and video system. So please participate as you are able. Are there any other announcements at this time? Seeing none, would you please rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading is from Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestor, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the people, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am studying before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so that as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Now we will pray responsibly, Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? They do not slander with their tongue. They do, not, they do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon their neighbor.
They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is from James. Every generous act of giving with each perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we will become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and preserve perseverance, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, the religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The words of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of their elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied brightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Well, I'm about to do something that's not super Lutheran, and that is I'm going to preach from the book of James. James is a book that Martin Luther wasn't thrilled with because it talks a lot about works. Now, we've probably heard the term like works righteousness and how Lutherans aren't in that line of theology. We see God and we see grace as a gift from God. We don't earn it. We don't work for it. It's a gift given unconditionally. But that doesn't mean that we should dismiss what James is writing, what James has to tell us. So when we think of works, we might think of good deeds, things we do in the world, things that help others. James is more than just the works. As we heard, we are to be doers, not merely hearers. There's more than the work itself. There's something here about moving from listening to action. So we're called to think of these ways in which we can be of service to others. But first, I want us to think about the context in which the book of James is situated. See, James has a specific audience, an audience of likely dispersed Jews who are in the empire, meaning that there is an authority ruling over them, possibly trying to stop, erasure, cease their practices, their traditions. So it's dangerous. It's difficult. There is much to lose. And James says, in the midst of this danger, don't just listen, do. So if we're to act in response to that, if we're to think about God's gift of grace, then what do we do? Where do we go with that? A pastor once told me on my internship, he said, Lutherans aren't about works righteousness, but we are about righteous works, meaning we're about doing good in response for what God has given us. We don't do it to earn God's love, but we do it out of the gift of love, that because we are so loved, we want to provide that and show that to others. We pass it forward. I won't make you raise your hand, but I imagine some of us have been in a line at either a fast food place or a grocery store and heard the term pass it forward as somebody has maybe paid for your coffee or paid for something you've ordered and you didn't even know the person, a stranger. That can be a good work. That can be something that you do just because you care and love the world, just because we are the body of Christ in this time and place. So we're called to be doers, not just hearers, like James said. And that means that we move from knowledge to wisdom. So wisdom is how we act on what we know. I'm going to say that again. Wisdom is how we act on what we know. It's how we use it. It's what we do with it. It's moving from the Bible to action. It's moving from that call of what we are to do next with what we know in our heart, in our faith, in our prayer life. It's what we take from the promise of eternal life with God and how we offer and share that message in our actions how we love one another in our midst, how we face the difficulties together, not alone. There aren't magic words that equal the love of God. Rather, we can be acting out of love. We are to welcome the stranger. We are to care for the orphan, the widows, all that is listed in our text and more because we are that body of Christ in the world. James specifically identifies those who are in need of care. Towards the end of our passage today, we heard about the orphans and the widows. 
those that are maybe separated from society don't have the safety and security that others have. We're not separate from that devastation and destruction and danger that others face, because we are community together. So rather, we are called to enter into it in a way that helps. We are called to shine Christ's love in volatile and dangerous places. Now, I'm not saying run into danger, but I'm saying sometimes we need to do more than send nice words and nice thoughts. In 2001, I was a missionary in Guatemala, and on my way through Guatemala City, the capital, I was getting ready to board a small bus for transportation. And I was told early in the morning that I should prepare a few hours in advance. And I asked why. And I was told that, unfortunately, there was warfare breaking out. And we were being met, public transportation was being met with ballistics and firearms and those people were being removed from transportation. Some held captive, some unfortunately met their death. So if I needed to be safe, I needed to leave earlier and in the undercover of night. That's a hard place to be. And I'm not saying for any of us to dig into that, but I am saying people live every day in danger and we can do more. We can be the hearers that move to doing. We can provide God's love in different ways. So as I faced that danger, as I made choices about whether to leave a little bit earlier or not, I was with a few others and we did indeed have to leave early. Because it's not about putting us in bodily harm, but it is about showing God's love. So upon departure, We shared prayer together. We made arrangements for the security of those that were staying, those that were residents of Guatemala, those that needed to return to their villages in the northern region, hours and hours away. It's about doing what helps one another. So now, that's not to say that we don't encounter danger here. Sometimes we do. But leaning on one another is important. Looking for the way in which God's love shines through us to each other. There are weather disasters, climate disasters, there are war-torn areas, all of which call for our attention. So we must do more than speak the truth. We are to live the holy word of God out in our lives. We are to take faith and knowledge into action. For too long, sometimes we have shifted our eyes and just said okay and we're sorry. But now we have time. We talked about God's work our hands Sunday earlier. Maybe some of you own the yellow shirt. There's a bright yellow t-shirt that says, God works our hands. Let's be the hands. Let's do the things that are needed in this world. Let's act as Christ would. So may we enter those sacred spaces. May we walk with one another, talk with one another, and be community together. Remembering that wisdom is how we live it out, how we live out our faith of what Christ has taught us. And that the glory of God overflows in those ways. The generous love of God is promised. May we look into mirrors that not only reflect ourselves, but that can reflect God's love to the world. That we don't merely say it, we do it. For actions speak louder than words. I've heard that many times, I'm sure you all have. Let us be the action. Let us find the spaces in between, the sacredness of what it means to enter the house of a widow or the institution or school where orphans are, 
or even borders or boundaries which are difficult. We need to be true to our faith, true to living out a religion that reminds us of love that we share, that we are equipped to share that love with God's people, that together we shoulder the yoke that we carry, the hardships, the difficulties. We are community. We hear the concerns and we respond. For we are not merely hearers, but today we move from the space of listening to God's word to being that active part of God in our world, the Holy Spirit moving within us, livening us to action. May it be so. Amen. We confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church that it is safe that it, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. We 
We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are, un who are unemployed, underemployed, experiencing po poverty or illness, especially Maddie and Gary, Dakota, Jennifer, David, Eleanor, Marion, our troops and their families, Carol, Terry, Bill, Pam, Tom, Brenda, Larry, Joe and Gloria, Bill Smith and family, Deb, and Deb Weaver. Bring food, shelter, clothes, health, and sustainability for daily life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the congregation of St. John's, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example by their example, and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.